high then we have python and when we can implement most of the efficient data structures in python why do we need libraries like numpy and pandas in this video i'll walk you through why is there a need for numpy and how is it useful for parallel processing i hope you all like it if you like the content on my channel please consider clicking the subscribe button as that motivates me to make more such videos thank you numpy is the core library for scientific computing in python it provides a high performance multi dimensional array object and tools for working with these arrays a numpy array is basically a grid of values all of the same type and is indexed by a tuple of non negative integers the python core library provided is called as list a list is the python equivalent of an array but is resizable and can contain elements of different types a common beginner question is what is the real difference between python and numpy the simplest answer is performance numpy data structures perform better in size performance and functionality when i say size numpy data structures take up less space as compared to list when i say performance they have a need for speed and are faster than list and when i say functionality scipy and numpy have optimized functions such as linear algebra operations built in let's go over the points that i have discussed in detail about how numpy is better than python's list by first starting by importing the necessary modules the first point that i mentioned was numpy data structures take up less space as compared to your normal python structures like list let's see how that happens first i create an empty list and name it x underscore list using the function get size of from the system library i find out the size of my empty list that i have created and it turns out to be 64 i have also defined a variable called as n underscore elements which is currently defined to 100000 that i'll be basically using to create either numpy arrays or list corresponding to that number of elements so what i do next is i want to find out the size of the list containing 100000 elements for which i use the list comprehension and get the size of that list and that value turns out to be 824464 the next thing that i do is i create a numpy array out of those 100000 elements in a list by using the function called as np.array and i again use the function get size of from the sys library to get the size of my numpy array and i find that the array size or the numpy array size is 800096 which is much more smaller as compared to the list size having the same number of elements this is again verified by taking the difference of the sizes of the list and the numpy array that i have created and i find that 24368 is the size which is overshot when i use a list as compared to a numpy array for 100000 elements so this clearly demonstrates that numpy takes up less space so the more numbers you want to play around with the better it is if you start using numpy arrays over your normal list data structures in python the next thing that we look at is performance numpy is designed to be efficient with matrix operations more specifically most processing in numpy is vectorized vectorization involves expressing mathematical operations such as multiplication that we are using here as occurring on entire arrays rather than their individual elements with vectorization the underlying code is parallelized such that the operations that we are performing on the numpy array can run on multiple array elements at once rather than looping through them one at a time as long as the operation that you are applying does not rely on any other array elements like in case of a matrix multiplication then vectorization will give you then vectorization will give you awesome speed ups looping over python arrays list or dictionaries can be slow thus the vectorized operations in numpy are mapped to highly optimized c code making them much more faster than their standard python counterparts let's understand how fast the operations happen using code so first i define an empty list and i create a list of 100000 elements these are my first five elements and these are my last five elements so i have defined a simple list whose values range from 0 to 5 nines or 99999 if i have an operation that i want to carry out on every element inside a list it would happen sequentially now if i look at the new list it starts from 10 and goes till 100009 if i start capturing the time of this process 
it takes around 0.008499 seconds to execute it may look very small at this stage but consider if you have a big application running all of these small overheads will count at the end stage when you want a response from an api to come up very fast now let's look at the numpy counterpart for doing the same exercise the first thing that i do is i create a numpy array out of a list having 100000 elements let's also find out the elements that are present so i have the same set of elements that i had in my list now the task in hand is i want to add a number 100 to each element of my numpy array and i print out the time taken for carrying out this operation using numpy and i find that the time taken is 0.0021 seconds if i find out the ratio of non numpy time over numpy time i find that non numpy implementation of carrying out a simple operation of adding one number to all the numbers takes four times as much time when you add the same number to a numpy array now the obvious question is why is this faster in numpy in numpy we have vectorized the whole data structure that we have and one element like 100 is added to all the elements one at a time parallelly such that the result is extracted out quickly that is why numpy array performs better than your list data structure so stop using list in your whole approach go in for numpy for better and faster executions this was my take on how numpy arrays are faster than list i hope you all enjoyed the video if you do have any questions with what we have covered in this video then feel free to ask in the comment section below and i'll do my best to answer those if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them then the easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up and also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone whom you think would find them useful please consider clicking the subscribe button to be notified for future videos and thank you all for watching